What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another master class. For today's master class, we're going to be going over sampling. I'm going to show you guys everything I know about sampling, where to find samples, how you should be chopping them up, how to find the root note for your sample, and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, first up, where can you actually go and find samples? You could go to like a record store, you know, flip through a bunch of different records and stuff like that, and then hook up a record player to your computer. But because we have the internet, I'm just gonna go over that. First, let's go over free places to find samples. And when I say free, take that with like a grain of salt. Go to YouTube and search stuff to sample find a variety of different like playlists and stuff like that. And these are just songs that might sound good if you were to sample them. Another thing you can do on YouTube is search sample packs. And there's a lot of different sample packs that you can download as well that people upload on here. Now in order to download these sounds from YouTube, the sample pack will usually have a link in the description that you can use to download it. Now another place to find free samples is Looperman. There's a lot of different cool free samples that people will upload on here. Now, one important thing to note about these free samples, a lot of the times these are not royalty free. So although it may be free to download and try out and use, if you're going to you know, get a placement or make a song with a larger artist, you might have to be paying a percentage to the person who either uploaded the sample pack or if it's an older artist, then you know who knows what you're gonna have to do in order to actually get that cleared. You guys may have realized this already, but I am not a lawyer, so I can't really advise you too much on, you know, sampling rights, etc. because I just don't know. And depending on where you live, the laws can be completely different. So just do your own research in regards to that if you want to use a sample. Now, some paid places to get samples are one, we've got good old Splice. And Splice has tons of different samples for a variety of different genres, which is really nice. And from my understanding, I believe like all these samples are royalty free on Splice, which is really cool. The only downside is everybody uses Splice, so you're not probably going to find any like super unique stuff. So just keep that in mind as well. Another site that you can use that's also paid is Tracklib. And this one works a little bit differently. You can get some really dope samples on here. However, you might have to pay a little bit more money. Like oftentimes, if you want to like sample a certain song, you might have to pay like a $50 like licensing fee. And then another option for paid samples, and I think this is probably the best way to get like cool, unique samples and also kind of get a chance to work with producers that you really like. Some of them will have royalty free sample packs, some of them won't, but it's still a really cool way to one, support producers that you like and basically collab with them. And speaking of sample packs, next week, got my first sample pack dropping. Now, when it comes to actually picking your sample, I usually recommend using something with kind of a lot going on, just because when you chop it up, it's gonna sound a bit cooler. However, when I personally make beats, I kind of steer away from anything that has drums in the background, as otherwise you have to either layer a drum over it, might not always be in time, and so it's just gonna end up kind of sounding weird. And then just personally, the style of beats that I make, it just sounds better when I don't use anything with like drum sounds or anything like that first thing that you're going to need to do is once you drag in your sample is make sure that it's lined up with the correct tempo. And so in this case, I know the tempo of my sample as I'm just using a sample from Splice. And so it's clearly on time and you're going to want to turn this metronome on. Make sure it's on hi-hat. I don't know who would do this. If you're doing that, there's something wrong with you. Another thing that you can do if you have your sample and you're not sure of the tempo, right click and then go to detect tempo. And typically I don't go with the estimated amount right here. I'll typically go in between the BPM range. And so this one, I'm pretty sure it's between 100 and 200. So I'll just go right here. And then it notes that the estimated tempo is about 64. Go right here, click, play your sample and just tap to the rhythm of the sample and it'll register it up here. Then if you have your sample and you want to just change the tempo of it, maybe you want to slow it down, just go here, click stretch. And then you can go up here, change your sample and it's going to keep it at the same pitch, but it'll slow it down. So you can also go here and play with the pitch. One thing to make sure you do when you do play with the pitch though, is if you look in this top left corner, you're gonna see cents. So right now it says 400 cents. You just wanna make sure to go up or down by only hundreds. Cause if you don't, it's gonna be in between pitches and it'll be kind of detuned. It's gonna just make everything harder for you.
So I like how that sounds. So we'll go with that. And already right there, the sample sounds a lot different from its original state. Now, if you're sampling something off of YouTube, like an old song or something like that, or you're downloading something from Tracklib, one issue you could run into is when you're trying to like line up your sample, the tempo isn't syncing. And so what you might end up having to do is cut it up a little bit and move things over. So in this case, I'm just moving this over right here. If you look right over here, this is an extending. And so what you can do to kind of fix that is if you just go click on your sample and then click on either generic bleeding or you can also try smooth bleeding. And what that's gonna do is it's going to make it so it doesn't abruptly stop and it kind of makes it sound like it's extending more. And so before we did that, here's what it sounded like. So you hear that pause right there. And then after. And then another issue you might run into if you hear like a popping sound with your sample, just go to edit and audio editor, and then you're just gonna wanna zoom in like a ton and just make sure your chop is in between one of these little circular lines and that'll remove the popping. Now, when it comes to actually like choosing a part that you want to go in and sample and kind of chop up, I usually just like to listen through and look for the most exciting parts. Using like Splice or somebody else's sample pack can be pretty easy to kind of figure it out. And so here, all I really, really need to do. And that just perfectly loops into itself. And then if you're not using this method, you're gonna kinda have to scroll through, listen around, and then use that tempo trick that I just showed you potentially. But maybe you'll just get lucky and it'll just loop perfectly as well as there are some songs that definitely do that. So once you have what you wanna actually chop up though, I'm just gonna do that right here and actually turn this into its own audio file. So just go Control Alt C. And now this is its own audio file. Now if you want to actually chop it up, grab your blade tool right here, and then you can kind of play with how much you want to actually cut. So this is half a beat, just do something random. Do something like this, maybe reorganize it so it's this way. And it's really just testing stuff out. So that doesn't sound very good, but you get the picture. Just, you know, chop things up move them around and kind of just figure out what sounds good. Only thing I can say that is important is you just want to have a constant kind of a rhythm. So maybe this will sound a little bit better. Another method, and this is my preferred method typically, open up Fruity Slicer, drag your sample in right here, go up to here, the blade, select beat, this is just gonna make sure it's cut on the pace of your beat, so whatever BPM you're using. Then you wanna pull up the attack a little bit and the decay. This is gonna get rid of the popping noise. That alone already sounds like it's sampled. <laughs> but some other things you can do is you can turn the attack way up. So that actually sounds pretty cool. Kinda smoothed everything out. Another thing you can do is go and play with the pitch here as well, which is just right here. Just remember to only go up or down by 100. So let's go down 300 cents. So that sounds pretty cool, honestly. I feel like you could just go with this and be good to go, but we're gonna you know, do a little bit more stuff because that'd be kind of boring tutorial. Like, yep, this is how you chop it up. This is it. Uh, you can also play with like the time shifting right here, kind of like stretch out the time. And you can actually like reverse certain sounds, which is a cool little effect. So if I just want a certain chop reverse, I can do that. You could even do this and just do it in a rhythm and then not change anything else up. So let's just try something like this. So that sounds pretty tight as well. And then if you get in here, you can actually you know play with these chops. And the key with this as well is just repetition. It has to make sense. You can't just do a bunch of random notes everywhere kind of method I like to use is kind of follow the original pattern for a bit and then just add a couple change ups as it kind of moves in a little bit. Let's try something like this. Maybe add a little bit of variation over here. And 
And then in terms of actually finding like where you need to put your 808s or your bass lines when it comes to using samples, the best kind of method, especially if you do a chop like this, really just to start with whatever is the key that it's in. Now, if you don't know the actual key of your sample, one thing that you can do is you can just go into an app called Key Finder, which you can just download for free on the internet, grab your sample, drag it in, run batch analysis, and then it'll tell you what key it's in. So I know this is in C sharp minor. And then in the background, I've just highlighted all the notes that are in C sharp minor. And what I would basically go in and do is just put all of my drums first on C sharp, as I know it's going to sound good. And then with a chop like this, to be honest, so you just kind of want to go through each note in the scale and just test them out and see what ends up sounding good. So that A sounds fine. Now another thing you can do is if you actually click on the sample and you go to edit and pitch corrector, you can kind of see where all the different notes are being played. So you could go off of that. And then I also have a video on actually how to find the exact MIDI of your sample as well that you guys can feel free to check out. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. Peace.